greetings of the day to all of you <clears throat> my dear students on the persistent demand of many of my students through the youtube channel and on the demand of my own mtech students here at mit srinagar <clears throat> i have decided to uh, deliver a series of lectures on a very important uh, topic which belongs to the field of specialization of power electronics and electrical drives the topic on on which i am planning to deliver a series of lectures and record them for uh, the benefit of my students and for the benefit, benefit of all the students of the country in general uh, the subject is electric drives well uh, this electric drives is taught uh, mostly at uh, masters or pg level uh, with re uh, respect to the specialization in power electronics and electrical drives many institutes like iits nits and other institutes where pg program or mtech program in power electronics is floated this is one of the core courses or core subjects additionally in many institutes this subject is taught as an elective course at btech level so uh, electric drives is one of the most fascinating applications of power electronics uh, for your information let me share one thing with you that is in many institutes uh, where uh, mtech is floated in power electronics it is designated as mtech in power electronics and electrical drives this electrical drives name is tagged with this power electronics specialization which signifies the importance of this very important course so i have decided to record lectures on this course for my students so today is the first lecture on this course today is uh, um, thursday 29th december 2022 we are at the fag end of this year 2022 and uh, the course on which i will be delivering this uh, series of lectures is i will write here course code or sorry course title it is electric drives or you can call it electrical drives and in our institute in electrical engineering department of nit srinagar Uh, this course we teach at mtech level for M mtech students those students who are pursuing their pg program mtech in power electronics and electrical drives and for them the course code is eem120 and lecture tutorial and practical distribution is 3 dash dash or we can make it 2 1 dash in fact we can have a few tutorial classes where we'll be trying to solve the numerical problems and uh, the main uh, syllabus or course contents of this course uh, the students of nit srinagar they can download the course contents or the syllabus of this course from our website that is www.nit3.ac.in there they can go to electrical engineering department and in the in electrical engineering departmental website you can find the course code of this course this will come under mtech in power electronics and electrical drives course and you can download the course contents well today will be our introductory class on this course on electrical drives so let me write electric drive first of all we have to understand what we mean by drive what is a drive what do we mean by a drive so for example if you talk of an industrial drive industrial drive the job of an industrial drive is to uh keep a working mechanical load in rotation so the objective is to keep i'll write here to keep a working load or 
I will write here working mechanical load in rotation. in rotation or in motion now what do you mean by working mechanical load so you see in industry or in fact in industry or in domestic applications or in transportation we have different types of mechanical loads for example the one of the examples of mechanical loads is a lift another example is a crane another example is for example a printing press Another example is fan, another example is blower, okay, and similarly vehicle is another example, and similarly we have, you know, different type, different other, uh, you know, we have woodworking machine, woodworking machine, we have conveyor, we have hoists, so different types of mechanical loads are found in industries and those mechanical loads perform certain tasks they produce some product okay they perform certain task for example what is the function of a fan to circulate the cooling air similarly what is the function of this mechanical load a vehicle to uh, uh, its uh, main function is transportation to make it make us move from one place to another place similarly what's the job of hoist to lift the load from say ground level to some um, height what's the job of printing press to, to print uh, on the paper okay what's the job of a blower to blow the hot air or cool air so there are different types of loads found in domestic applications and also in industrial applications where the mechanical load performs certain tasks, useful tasks, useful work and in order to carry out that work that load has to be kept in motion or it has to be kept in rotation. So that is what a drive does. A drive keeps a working mechanical load which may be any one of these or any other mechanical load in motion or in rotation. So now these drives are of two types. If you see the classification of a drive, drives are broadly of two types. Number one is mechanical drive. And the second classification of drive is electrical drive. So we have two types of drives, mechanical drive and electrical drive. What is the difference between the two? Let us first of all talk about mechanical drive. So if we take mechanical drive, Mechanical drive comprises of three parts. First of all, a prime mover, which actually produces the mechanical energy. The examples of prime mover are IC engine. For example, in uh, you know vehicles, we have the prime mover, which is the engine, IC engine, or it may be a diesel engine. Or, for example, it may be a turbine. What is the job of prime mover? To produce the mechanical energy. And then this mechanical energy has to be transmitted to the mechanical load and to, uh, in order to keep that in rotation or in motion. Now, how do we transfer or transmit the mechanical energy from the prime mover to the mechanical load? Through a transmission system. So we have a transmission system or we have a transmission mechanism transmission mechanism or transmission equipment the job of this transmission equipment is to transmit or transfer the mechanical energy produced by the prime mover to the load the example of transmission mechanism or transmission equipment is i mean it may be a gear simple gear or it may be a belt pulley and belt arrangement okay so for example, you have IC engine here and you have some mechanical load at some distance to transmit the mechanical energy from this uh, IC engine to the load, you may use a belt, okay? Or in some cases, we use the gears. For example, in vehicles, we use the gears. So this is the transmission mechanism. And third component is the mechanical load, which performs the main tasks, the main useful work 
And I have already given you the examples, various examples of mechanical loads. It may be an, uh, a lift, it may be a hoist, it may be a crane, it may be a printing press, it may be a vehicle, it may be a train and so on. So in order to set the mechanical load in motion, it requires mechanical energy where from it gets that mechanical energy from the prime mover, which may be either IC engine or diesel engine or a turbine. And this mechanical energy is transferred to the mechanical load via a transmission system, for example, a pulley belt system or it may be a gear. Okay, so I can uh, draw the schematic or block diagram of a mechanical drive. It's very simple. So this is the mechanical drive block diagram. This is prime mover. Again, a prime mover may be an engine or a turbine. And then this is the this may be the transmission system, and this is the mechanical load. This is the mechanical load. This is transmission equipment. It may be a belt, or it may be uh, you know uh, a shaft. The shaft of the prime mover is coupled to the shaft of the load, maybe through some gearing arrangement or directly uh, a direct shaft. And the job is to transfer or transmit the mechanical energy produced by this prime mover to the load to set the load into motion or into rotation. So this is about mechanical drive, a general block diagram of a mechanical drive. Then what is an electric drive? If I write here electrical drive or electric drive. An electric drive also comprises of three components. It comprises of prime mover plus transmission equipment plus mechanical load same as in case of a mechanical drive however in this case the prime mover is not an engine it's not a turbine it is an electric motor the prime mover is electric motor that means the engine or turbine is replaced by motor so what does this electrical motor do it receives electrical energy either in dc form if it is a DC motor or AC form, if it is an AC motor, converts that electrical energy into mechanical energy. Once it produces the mechanical energy through the transmission equipment, which may be again a belt pulley arrangement, or it may be simply a shaft or a gearing, gear system, transfers that mechanical energy to the mechanical load and sets that mechanical load into rotation or into motion for doing the useful work. So this is the structure of an electrical drive. Uh, a block diagram of a simplified electric drive is like this. This is the power source, electrical source. And then we have motor. We have an electrical motor. This is electric motor. And this electric motor is coupled to mechanical load. This is the mechanical load. So this is prime mover. This is the load and this is the transmission equipment, which may be simply a shaft coupling the load with the motor or it may be a shaft through some you know uh, gear arrangement so this is the generalized diagram of an electric drive so therefore we can say that uh, electric drive uh, comprises of an electrical motor uh, which com uh, converts mechanical energy into electrical in uh, sorry which converts electrical energy into mechanical energy and transmits that transmits that electrical energy to the mechanical load via that transmission equipment for useful work by setting the load into rotation or into motion okay so therefore an electrical drive is a drive in which an electric motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy for doing the useful work for setting the load into motion or in other words we can define electric drive uh, as a type of machine equipment to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy and provide electrical control of the process. So I can write this definition for you. So we can define an electric drive is a type of machine equipment, machine equipment to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy
and provide electrical control of the process and provide electrical control of the process okay the process means the transmission of mechanical energy to the load and we can control that mechanical energy like when I, when I say control of process that means control of torque developed by the motor and control of speed of the load that can be done electrically not mechanically whereas in mechanical drive you have an engine and this torque control or speed control is done through mechanical means or it is done mechanically here it is done electrically so it provides the electrical control of the process and in fact these electric motors provide a very wide range of torque control and a very wide range of speed control and the torque control and speed control process is very very easy and it is very fast in electrical motors than in engines and it is done at a very high efficient efficiency that means this process is very efficient in electric drives than in mechanical drives now if you look into the history of these drives uh, uh, i would like to say about three to four decades back uh, industries were flooded with uh, mechanical drives but now the entire scenario has changed most of the drives you find in industries especially they are electrical drives okay uh, like uh, you have uh, various types of industrial loads like you have semiconductor manufacturing plants you have food processing plants you have chemical plants you have you know pumps blowers cranes lifts hoists woodworking machines printing presses all these loads or all these industrial processes they are driven by electrical drives nowadays we don't we no longer use mechanical drive okay these electrical drives find very wide applications not only in industries but in domestic applications for example if you see the application of electric drives let me uh, discuss with you Dom they are domestic applications in our households we use various types of electrical drives like for example we use in the form of fans okay what's the fan it uses a single phase induction motor a single phase ac motor and then there are blades on the fan and we use fan during summers to provide us with the cooling air okay then we have in our homes we have blowers for example we have hot air blowers which we use during the uh, winters for keeping our rooms and ourselves warm these blowers also have motors and those motors convert electrical energy into mechanical energy and set the blower into motion for doing the useful work and then for example we have washing machines in washing machines also we use electric drives we use motors okay we use a motor in the washing machine similarly refrigerators A refrigerator is another example of an electric drive that we use in our household applications or domestic applications what else we have water pumps or motor driven pumps motor driven pumps okay so these are motor driven pumps and then we have mixers grinders air conditioners these are various types of loads that we use in our domestic applications and all these loads are driven by electric motors so in a way all these drives are electric drives the various electric drives that we use in our homes are fans blowers washing machines refrigerators motor driven pumps mixers grinders and air conditioners what about industrial applications of electric drives in industries they have very huge applications for example in industries electric drives are used in uh, say uh, for example in um, I, will, I will write uh, right here semiconductor semiconductor manufacturing plants where we use electric drives 
for semiconductor manufacturing purposes. Similarly, food processing plants, food processing plants, chemical plants, Okay, this is another example of an electric drive used in industry. Then we have printing presses, printing press, hoist, blower, lift, cranes, woodworking machines. and so on. There are many, many more applications in industries where we use electric drives. So this is the application of electric drives in industries. That's the industrial applications. Similarly, we use electric drives in transportation. Transportation applications. Why do we use electric drives in transportation? Like in electric vehicles. All of you know that uh, the modern trend is the widespread uh, use of or promotion of electric vehicles. In India also, it is projected that by the year 2030, uh, our roads will be flooded with electric vehicles. All IC engine based vehicles will be replaced by electric vehicles. This is the modern trend because electric vehicles have their own advantages. They are pollution free and all that. And similarly, electric traction. In electric, I mean, uh, trains, electric local, uh, electric track, in traction applications, our locomotives are not using anymore these diesel engines, that they, they are not using uh, IC engines, they are not using turbines, they are using electric motors. So in electric railways also, electric traction also, we have a very widespread use of electric drives. In India, almost all Almost all railway tracks are now electrified and uh, we have electric traction type uh, applications. Okay, so this is the application of electric drives in um, transportation, like electric vehicles and electric traction. Now the question is, uh, why mechanical drives have been replaced by electric drives? Okay. It is because of the fact that electrical drives possess some significant advantages over mechanical drives. So let me discuss with you advantages of electrical drives over mechanical drives. Advantages of electric drives. Electric drives possess some very significant advantages. First is that electric drives are clean drives. They don't use any hazardous fuel. And there is no emission of hazardous gases like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. So let me write it right here. Electric drive is a clean drive. When I say it is a clean drive, there is no use of hazardous fuel like petrol, diesel, gas. It's not used there. No use of hazardous fuel. When we don't use fuel, we don't burn petrol, we don't burn kerosene, we don't burn uh, diesel. So no hazardous gases are produced. No hazardous gases like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, etc. are emitted. So there is no emission of these hazards. So therefore they... Uh, they, they, they result in a sort of clean drive and from the urban pollution point of view it's always encouraged that the pollution level in urban areas must be drastically reduced and one of the ways of doing is to replace the mechanical drives with electric drives because electric drives are clean drives they don't use hazardous fuels there is no burning of fuels hence there is no emission of hazardous gases like carbon dioxide carbon monoxide etc so that's why uh, throughout the world, the modern trend is to replace the IC engine based vehicles by electric vehicles because electric vehicles use electric drives, which are clean drives. 
so they uh, re they will definitely result in the reduction of pollution level in uh, urban areas okay so electric drives are clean drives this is one of the most significant advantages of electric drives over mechanical drives so they produce low noise level their noise level is also very low third advantage is they are smaller in size so for example if you take 100 horsepower mechanical drive this may be the size of a 100 horsepower mechanical drive as compared to a 100 horsepower electrical drive so if this is mechanical drive this is electrical drive both are 100 horsepower the size of electric drive is less than the size of mechanical drive so it occupies obviously less space so electric drives are highly efficient drives as compared to mechanical drives so the efficiency is quite high so they result in a lot of saving in the energy and energy conservation is one of the requirements in modern era because of because of uh, huge energy demands and a lot of pressure uh, and a lot of load on the fossil fuels a lot of burden on the fossil fuels it's always encouraged to save the energy energy conservation is done if we replace the mechanical drives by electrical drives because electrical drives are highly efficient drives as compared to mechanical drives they are also highly reliable their reliability is high okay so they require very low maintenance an IC engine requires high maintenance as compared to an electric motor. Electric motor is a low maintenance machine as compared to IC engine. Okay, so other advantages are like they are adaptable to wide range of torque and speed control. So if you have an electric drive, in an electric drive you can have a wide range of control over torque as well as speed as compared to a mechanical drive. Okay, They are available in, uh, so they have uh, overload capacity also, good overload capacity. You can overload an electrical drive for you know, short duty loads because all electric drivers have got overload capacity. They result in smooth start and stop and smooth acceleration during starting. They don't result in jerky drive. When you start an electric drive, it accelerates very smoothly. It starts smoothly and you can stop it smoothly as well. Okay, another advantage which is very significant advantage is four quadrant operation is possible in an electric drive. Four quadrant operation in torque speed plane. Torque speed plane. Four quadrant operation means that if you have an electric drive, we can make that drive rotate in say one direction, say clockwise. Then you can break that, stop that, then make it rotate in the anti-clockwise or counterclockwise direction, break it again. So you can make the drive rotate in forward direction, stop it, and then reverse direction, stop it. So in those applications where a reversible drive is required, four quadrant operation is required, and electric drives are very, very easy to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to produce as far as four quadrant operation is concerned. It is very easy to... Uh, give four quadrant operation in an electric drive than in a mechanical drive okay so uh, because of this four quadrant operation one of uh, one of the advantages of electric drives is that regenerative braking is possible regenerative braking and hence saving in energy and hence saving in energy in mechanical drive, if you want to brake the drive, you have to apply the mechanical brakes. You have a shoe horse, you have a shoe drum, you have a drum. When you press the pedal, the brake presses against the drum and it stops the vehicle or it stops the load. 
in the process whatever is the kinetic energy of the engine and its rotating parts all that kinetic energy is wasted in the form of heat because of the friction between brake shoe and brake drum on the other hand in electric drives in some electric drives you can uh, slow down the drive or even you can stop the drive by applying a type of electrical braking which is called regenerative braking in regenerative braking we'll study regenerative regenerative braking in details in future lectures in regenerative braking it is possible to brake the motor electrically and while doing so we don't waste the braking energy the braking energy which is the mechanical energy it's converted into electrical energy and that electrical energy is fed back to the source through a power electronic converter and since we are feeding this braking energy back back to the source we are not wasting it so there is a lot of saving in the energy so this is another advantage of electrical drive over mechanical drive and because of all these about 10 to 11 advantages I have discussed with you advantages of electric drives that's why electric drives have now completely taken over the mechanical drives and uh, as far as these electric drives are concerned electrical drives are nowadays available in wide power range let me give you example of range in which the electric power range in which the electric drives are available for example if you take computer fan you open a computer pc you know cpu you'll find a small fan for cooling purposes that fan is a very very small fan of a few watts rating its power rating is only a few watts okay on the other hand if you see in your homes in your kitchens mixers and grinders mixer and grinder it is power rating is a few hundred watts a few hundred watts maybe 200 watts or 300 watts or 500 watts okay and then if you see air conditioners which we use in offices in commercial establishments and also in our homes air conditioners are available in power rating of a few thousand watts say for example 1 kilowatt 1.5 kilowatt or 2 kilowatt air conditioners are available on the other hand if you see industrial drives industrial drives are available in a few hundreds of kilowatts their power rating is a few hundred kilowatts they are not in watts they are in hundreds of kilowatts or a few thousands of kilowatts or a few hundreds of kilowatts so for example you may see an industrial drive of 100 kilowatt 200 kilowatt rating 300 kilowatt rating and so on and if you see electric traction say electric locomotive electric locomotive is available in a very high power range it is in megawatt range so you can see the wide power range in which electric drives are available in computer fan we have a very small electric motor or electric drive a few watts in mixer and grinder we have electric drive or electric motor a few hundred watts rating in air conditioners the rating is a few thousands of watts in industrial drives the rating of the drive is a few hundreds of kilowatts and finally in electric traction the drive is available in megawatt range as far as power rating is concerned so this shows a very wide you know uh, uh, power range in which electric drives are available nowadays okay <clears throat> now let me show you the general block diagram or schematic diagram of an electric drive block diagram of electric drive An electric drive block diagram is like this. This is power supply, electrical supply, which may be an AC power supply or which may be a DC power supply. And then we have a power processor or power modulator. I will write here power processor. Or we can also call it power modulator. The job of power processor or power modulator is to process the power and let me tell you this power processor or power modulator is nothing 
but it is a power electronic converter okay i'll discuss about it later on and then we have electric motor this is the electric motor which is basically the prime mover of your drive which converts the mechanical energy receiving from power processor into uh, uh, sorry electrical energy it receives from power processor it converts that electrical energy into mechanical energy and then that through the transmission equipment and gives that mecha mechanical energy to the load now electric drives may be available in open loop or in closed loop for example a fan drive is an open loop drive in your computer uh, power supply also you have a fan that is open loop blowers are also in our homes small blowers we use they are open loop but there are many many applications especially in industries where open loop drives are not useful where we have closed loop drives for closed loop drive what we do we sense some quantities like we may sense some speed we may sense torque and through some sensing uh, you know devices like speed sensor or torque sensor so this is sensing unit which senses some quantity and then this sensing unit gives this sensed parameter to controller this is the controller okay now to this controller we have another signal which is called command the command may be a torque command okay when you set the torque command it uh, you know decides how much torque the motor should develop or it, generally it is the speed command when you set the speed command say you set speed, speed command at omega m star your electric motor runs at that particular speed and then what is the job of this controller the job of this controller is to generate the control pulses or control signals and those control signals are in the form of short duration pulses like this which are given to the devices of this power processor which is nothing but a power electronic converter and this power processor processes the power controls the power gives the controlled power to the electric motor so that the electric motor runs at a speed which is same as commanded speed now as far as this electric motor is concerned again it may be a dc motor or it may be an ac motor now if the motor is a dc motor then the drive is a dc drive and if the motor is an ac motor then we call it ac drive so therefore electric drives are of two types right here classification of electric drives is as dc drive and ac drive in your syllabus we have to discuss both types of drives dc drive as well as ac drive now this is a generalized schematic diagram or block diagram of an electric drive it comprises of I will, the various components are i will again explain to you power supply which may be ac power supply or dc power supply then power processor or power modulator which is nothing but power electronic converter the electric motor which may be dc motor or ac motor if the drive is a dc drive then it is dc motor and if your drive is ac drive then it is ac motor and then mechanical load and then we have the in the closed loop scheme we have a sensing unit which senses some parameters say it senses the speed and then gives that sense speed to the controller and in the controller we have a command command signal which, which may be a command command speed and the difference between the two is processed in the controller and the job of the controller is to generate the control signal in such a way that the electric drive or electric motor runs as per this command okay so this is the block diagram of a closed loop electric drive now various components of electric drive the what is the first component is electric supply or power supply first part is power supply as i have already told you this power supply may be ac or dc power supply now if you see ac power supply again the ac power supply may be single phase 230 volts 50 hertz ac power supply in indian scenario and this is as per indian standard and as per american standard it is single phase 110 volts 60 hertz this is us standard since we are using here our equipment is designed for indian standard so we will discuss all the drives in the scenario of 
uh, Indian standard, single phase 230 volts, 50 hertz. In aer aeroplanes or in aircrafts, we have single phase at 400 hertz power supply. Why do we use very high frequency in aircrafts? Because at high frequency, the size of magnetics is very, very small. Size of magnetics like inductances and capacitances is very, very small. That results in a very compact drive, very compact drive and at very high frequency, the size of drive because of small size of magnetics, the size of drive becomes very compact and that is one of the requirements in uh, aircrafts. We cannot carry very huge, uh, you know, large size and high weight drive. The size and weight of the drive should be very small. So therefore, there we use 400 hertz frequency. This is about single phase. If you have a three phase drive, then you have three phase 400 volts or 415 volts, 50 hertz drive. If it is a small power drive for small power drive and if your power uh, drive is medium and I will write here for medium and high power drives. The line to line voltage is not 400 volts. It is 3.3 kV or it may be 6.6 .6 kilo volts or 11 kilo volt at 50 hertz. Three phase supply. Okay, in industry you will see induction motors used at 3.3 kV or 6.6 .6 kV or even at 11 kV. So for low power three phase drives, we use 415 volts line voltage and for high power and medium power drives, the line voltage is three phase 3.3 kV or 6.6 .6 kV or 11 kV, right? So this is about various types of power supplies, AC power supplies. Now you may have a DC power supply. If your drive is a DC drive, you will be using DC power supply. The example of DC power supply is battery. Okay, like in electric vehicles, in the vehicles you have batteries and those batteries produce DC. And then that DC is given to the drive or maybe that DC is first converted into AC and then given to the AC drive. Or if you are using DC drive, that DC, uncontrolled DC is converted into controlled DC with the help of converter, DC to DC converter and then DC drive is controlled. Another example is solar photovoltaic, solar PV. So these are the examples of DC power supplies. So this is about power supply. So depending upon whether you are using DC drive or AC drive, you may be using DC power supply like battery or solar PV or you may be using AC power supply. If it is a single phase drive, you will be using single phase 230 volts, 50 hertz. If it is a three phase power supply, uh, sorry, three phase drive, then you may be using three phase 415 volts, uh, 50 hertz for low power drives and for medium and high power drives, 3.3 kV, 6.6 .6 kV or 11 kV AC power supply. So that was the first part. Then second is motor, electric motor. Second very important part of electric drive is electric motor. Now again you may use DC motor, DC motors or AC motor. You may use DC motor or AC motor. As far as DC motors are concerned, DC motors are of different types. If you are using DC drive, you will be obviously using DC motors. And DC motors are of different types like uh, separately excited DC motor, separately excited DC motor or you may use DC series motor or you may use DC compound motor compound motor or you may use permanent magnet DC motor so these are different types of DC motors are available now what type of motor you will use that will be decided by the mechanical load when you choose a motor the torque speed characteristics of the motor should match with the load requirements you cannot just take a motor and connect it to mechanical load that that does not work you have to first study these motors you have to uh, you, you should know about their torque speed characteristics and depending upon the mechanical load application then only once you know the torque speed characteristics of all types of motors 
and you know what are the load torque requirements load speed requirements you can accordingly choose a particular dc motor or similarly you can choose a particular ac motor depending upon the torque speed characteristics in fact the torque speed characteristics of the motor should match with the load requirements this is about dc motors now if your drive is an ac drive then you will you will be using ac motors and various types of ac motors are like induction motors and synchronous motors first of all induction motors induction motors are of two types slip ring induction motor srim or which is also called wound rotor induction motor and squirrel cage induction motor which motor to be used again it depends upon the torque speed characteristic and your load requirements the other type of ac motor is synchronous motor synchronous motors are again of two types wound field wound field type synchronous motor and permanent magnet synchronous motor pmsm permanent magnet synchronous motors okay and different application for different applications we may use different types of synchronous and again wound field synchronous motors are again of two types uh, first is uh, salient pole synchronous motor salient pole synchronous motor and second is cylindrical rotor synchronous motor cylindrical rotor synchronous motor okay so whether you should use salient pole synchronous motor or cylindrical rotor synchronous motor depends upon your load requirement load characteristics your application or should you use permanent magnet synchronous motor again that will be decided by the application and then we have um, this is about synchronous motors third type of ac motors are special motors third types of motors are special motors uh, we have dc motors we discussed about dc motors ac motors and third type or third category of motors is special motors in the special motors we will be concentrating on two types of motors one is called brushless dc motor brushless dc that is bl dc motor which is very popular nowadays especially in some applications like air conditioners and maybe electric vehicles also and another is uh, uh, the switched reluctance motor switched reluctance motor which is also called srm srm motors are also very popular nowadays and they have certain specific applications okay so this was about motors which is uh, motor is again a very important part of your electrical drive what is the next part of your electric drive next part of electric drive is power processor or power modulator power processor or power modulator now these power modul modulators are of different types for example if you are uh, Uh, source is ac but your motor is dc that means you are using a dc drive then you have to convert ac into dc what is the job of power processor you are connecting your uh, drive to ac but your drive is a dc drive it requires dc dc may not be available to you then you have to convert this ac into dc how do you do it you may there are different ways for example you may use a tap changing transformer for output voltage control you may use tap changing transformer plus uncontrolled rectifier what will this tap changing transformer do it will ch uh, change the voltage level of ac okay and then with the help of uncontrolled diode bridge rectifier you will convert this ac into dc and feed dc dc to your dc motor drive and hence control it or you may use an uncontrolled rectifier plus chopper that means your supply is ac that ac or you are converting it with the help of bridge rectifier into dc but uncontrolled dc and to convert this uncontrolled dc into controlled dc you are using a dc to dc converter or chopper and hence the average load voltage Uh, you can control and hence you can control the torque and speed of the dc drive 
third possibility is you may use phase controlled converter. In the in this case, you have two stages of conversion. First, you convert AC into uncontrolled DC. Then you convert uncontrolled DC into controlled DC with the help of chopper. So how many stages of conversion are there? Two, AC to DC and then DC to controlled DC. If you use phase controlled converter, it's a single stage conversion. It will convert AC into controlled DC. Okay, you don't need two stages. It will convert directly AC into controlled DC by which control? By alpha control, which is also called firing angle control or delay angle control. So you can use phase controlled converter and various types of phase controlled converters are like this. For example, you may have three phase phase controlled converters. They are like this semi converter or half controlled converter and fully controlled converter or full converter. I'm sure you must have studied about these converters in your, at your BTEC power electronics course level and then you have dual converter. Should you use semi converter, full converter or dual converter depends upon your application. If you if your drive runs only in one direction and it does not need any regenerative type braking then you may use semi converter because semi converter is a single quadrant converter. It operates in only one quadrant. It converts AC into DC and power flows from source to load. There is no possibility of reverse power flow. But if you want regenerative braking, I mean you want uh, power to flow in both the directions from source to load and load to source during braking period, then you may use full converter because full converter is a two quadrant converter. If you use again, uh, for example, for four quadrant operation, you may use a dual converter. I have just few moments back, I have given you an example of a four quadrant operation of a drive. The drive is operating in the, it's rotating or running in the clockwise direction, then stops and then anti-clockwise direction like this. So it's a reversible drive like this. There are many applications where this type of, you know, motion is required. Motion in one direction, then in another direction. So if the motor is running in clockwise direction, you have to first stop it and then you have to run it in the anti-clockwise direction. For that purpose, the converter that is most suitable is dual converter because it is a four quadrant converter because for this type of application, you need four quadrant operation. So this is about AC to DC converters. Okay. Now, if your input is DC and you have to convert that DC into DC, then you have to use DC to DC converters. For example, for if your drive is again a DC drive and DC is available to you, for example, in electric vehicles, batteries are there, DC power is applied, uh, DC power is available. You have to convert that uncontrolled DC into controlled DC. So you are using choppers. For example, you may use a step down chopper. What does a step down chopper do? It converts uncontrolled DC into controlled DC, but the output voltage is less than input voltage always. Then you may have a step up chopper. A step up chopper converts you know, uncontrolled DC again into controlled DC, but output voltage is greater than input voltage. That's why it's called step up chopper. Or you may have both step up, step down, oblique step up chopper. A chopper which converts, uh, in which the output voltage can be less than input voltage or it can be even more than input voltage depending upon the duty ratio. So these are different types of DC to DC converters or choppers that you can use for converting uncontrolled DC into controlled DC. Now if you have to convert DC into AC, for example in your electric vehicle, the power supply which is available to you is DC because you are using batteries there, lithium ion batteries which give DC power. But the drive may be AC drive, like you may use induction motor drive or switch reluctance motor drive. How will you convert this DC into AC? You have to use inverters. For that purpose, you have to use DC to AC converter, which is also called inverter. The job of inverter is con to convert DC into controlled AC. And then that controlled AC is given to the drive and that drive is controlled. Now these DC to AC converters or inverters are of two types, voltage source inverter and current source inverter. We'll study about a bit about these 
voltage source inverter fed drives and current source inverter fed drives in future lectures okay now another scenario maybe you have you may have to you, the input available to you is ac and you have to convert that uncontrolled ac into controlled ac so for that purpose you have to use ac to ac converters now these ac to ac converters are also of different types like they are of one type of ac to ac controller is ac to ac converter is called ac voltage regulator or ac voltage controller what does an ac voltage controller do it converts ac at fixed voltage into ac at variable voltage another is cyclo converter cyclo converter converts fixed voltage ac into variable voltage variable frequency ac and third is matrix converter matrix converter is a modern breed of ac to ac converters very popular they again convert fixed voltage fixed frequency ac into variable voltage variable frequency ac and they are very popular for industries okay so these are different types of ac to ac converters and these are different types of power processors so that in that block diagram i have shown you the complete block diagram of electric drive the power supply available to you may be ac or dc and you may have to convert that ac into dc if your motor is a dc motor i mean if you are using a dc drive or if power available to you is dc you may have to convert that dc into ac if your drive is an ac drive or power may be available to you in the form of dc and drive is also dc you have to convert that fixed dc into variable or controllable dc then you have to use power processor and i mean chopper so depending upon so the, the, the job of this power processor power processor is nothing but various types of uh, these power electronic converters it may be an ac to dc converter it may be a dc to dc converter it may be a dc to ac converter or ac to ac converter okay the job of power processor or power modulator is to process the power to convert power from one form to another form say from dc to ac or ac to ac or dc to control dc or ac to control ac and accordingly supply that power to the motor motor may be dc motor or ac motor and control the torque and speed of the motor in such a way that the objective is fulfilled the torque speed characteristics of the motor match with the load requirements and accordingly runs the load at a particular torque and at a particular speed this is the job of power processor and the other very important uh, parameters of this ac drive electric drive is uh, a sensing unit various types so i mean if the drive is a closed loop drive then you have to use sensors like speed sensors speed sensor you have to also use voltage sensor you have to also use current sensor for closed loop operation okay and then you have controller the job of controller is to receive these sensed quantities compare those these sense quantities with the commanded signal and accordingly produce the controlling signal the job of controller is to produce the controlling signal controlling signal means gating pulses or base drive gating pulses i mean if the convert if in the converter you are using igbts it produces the gating pulses supplies the those gating pulses to the igbt devices and accordingly you know controls the switching of the converter in such a way that power processing is done in a desirable fashion so this is about various components of electric drives so i will stop so in today's lecture i have given you some uh, basic introduction to what a drive means what are various types of drives like mechanical drive and electrical drive the basic structure of drive why we prefer electrical drives over mechanical drives various advantages of electric drives over mechanical drives then i have discussed with you the generalized block diagram or schematic diagram of an electric drives and we have discussed briefly about various parts of an electric drive i will stop here i advise all of you to go through this lecture in case of any queries any doubts please get connected to me thank you very much